Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbish fahri sadri wa sirri amri wa ala al-ukhata min lisani yaqo qawli rabbi zidhi ilma. Jazakallah khairan, uh, Dr. Dawood, um, for that beautiful reminder. Um, yeah, as a reminder, to, again, once again, that Dr. Dawood just said is this uh, reminder that we're going to be receiving right now is meant to be a reminder for myself and all of you, but not to be a replacement for the Jummah Khutbah. So after, inshallah, you're done listening to this when it is at the whole time, uh, make sure to pray four rakah and not two rakah because this is supposed to supplement a spiritual reminder, inshallah, so that we benefit just as we were used to benefiting when we could attend um, the Jummah prayer and not meant to be a replacement. Um, we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be returned to our masajid with dignity and in good health. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Um, so in today's brief reminder, inshallah, what I wanted to share um, is actually just a few uh, things um, not related to the coronavirus. Because alhamdulillah, I know it's important for us to keep up to date, but um, we also, there are times that change uh, within our lives. Um, last week, the reminder that I gave um, uh, was along the lines of uh, how to do tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or declare the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in different moments within our lives. And I specifically um, want to actually begin with that because that's the point of today's reminder as well. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents to us different moments within a day, different moments within a year, different moments within a lifetime. Um, and we, our situation changes, but in those situations, we still do tasbih or declare the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, last week, um, and this is one of the interesting things about these reminders now is now it's been recorded. But last week, the reminder I gave was actually about Zakariya alayhi salam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about Zakariya alayhi salam and was about to bless him with the blessing of a son that he wanted his entire life. But at, at the end of his life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the blessing of Yahya alayhi salam. And it's something interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to do. Yusabbihu uh, bukratan wa asila or, or bukratan wa ashiya um, that uh, point towards the tasbih or the perfection or the de declaration of the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically in the evening and in the morning. And the reason that's important is because our situation changes. When we think about our, our individual lives, sometimes the sun comes up and sometimes the sun goes down. Yes, the sun that we view out there comes up and goes down. But in those moments in which you feel like you have been shaken, or your life has changed significantly. Because what bigger change is there to the earth than to be in daytime or nighttime? But when that change happens, don't be taken away by the change of the of the creation. What? Declare the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has not changed. That's a reminder we should kind of keep with us. And the reminder that I wanted to give today that it relates to that is, Alhamdulillah, we've entered into the blessed month of Sha'ban. The month preceding Ramadan, it was the Sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that uh, um, in the months of Rajab and Sha'ban, the two months preceding Ramadan, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would say, "Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan." Oh Allah, accept from us or bless us um, in Rajab and Sha'ban and allow us to live up to the month of Ramadan. And one of the themes that I want to continuously point out today was this wasn't to uh, neglect the months of Rajab and Sha'ban in favor of Ramadan. If anything, it was to use the months of uh, Rajab and Sha'ban in order to supplement our Ramadan. Um, and the reason that this is the theme that I'm sticking to is because, um, unfortunately, uh, uh, Sha'ban becomes a uh, becomes overshadowed by Ramadan. Oftentimes, when our worship in Sha'ban is supposed to be different. It's supposed to be different than our worship in other months, just as our worship in Ramadan is different than our worship in any other months, just as our worship in the days of Zul Hijjah are different than our worship in anywhere else. Um, and it was actually narrated by Osama bin Zayd, the, the basically adopted grandson of the Prophet He's a companion of the Prophet who Zayd who was almost an adopted son to the Prophet. And when Zayd had his son Osama, the Prophet treated him as his, his own grandson. There are so many narrations in which he's running around with Hassan and Hussein um, because that's how the Prophet treated him. He was from the household of the Prophet that um, um, Osama uh, bin Zayd عنه, asked the Prophet and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, why is it that you fast so much in the month of Sha'ban? 
because it was uh, understood that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from his household it was recognized that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would fast more in the month of Sha'ban than any other month other than Ramadan. And actually by Umm uh, Salama radiyallahu anha, Stephen narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the two months he would fast in, in the entirety were the months of Sha'aban and the month of Ramadan. And he would join the two together. And so it's, why was this month so special to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam responded, um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi responded, ذَلِكَ uh, شَهْرٌ يَغْفُلُ النَّاسُ عَنْهُ بَيْنَ رَجَبْ ورمضان. And the Prophet Sallallahu the first thing that he says about this month is that this is the month that يَغْفُلُ that most of the people are heedless of or are in a state of غَفْلَ of عَنْهُ بَيْنَ رَجَبْ ورمضان. Between the month of Rajab and the month of Ramadan. Um, and to the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu the first part of this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu actually gives three reasons. But the first part of this hadith is significant because the month of Rajab was already important to the people of Medina and the people of Mecca because the month of Rajab was a sacred month even before the revelation came down about the month of Ramadan or any of the sacred months in Islam. And the people would already understand Rajab is a sacred month. And then once the revelation came about Ramadan, it was recognized that Ramadan is very special. But they would neglect the month in between. And the reason the Prophet ﷺ starts saying the specialty of Sha'ban is because of this is this is a constant theme within our tradition. Within our tradition, it's understood that the times in which most people are not cognizant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people that are cognizant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are in a special place with Allah. And this is something that's consistent throughout our tradition. We see the same thing happening when we think about why is standing up in the middle of the night, praying Qiyam, Qiyamul Layl, so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the point where Allah comes down to receive the prayers of those of us that stand up in the middle of the night. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. And the, the reasons are, one, of course, it's a bit more difficult. The more effort we have to put forward, the more reward is going to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the second reason, the second reason is actually because most people are sleeping. When most people are sleeping and you stand up, suddenly you become elevated in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have so many narrations like this. Why is it that right after the Fajr prayer, if you do your adhkar right after, or do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right after the Fajr prayer, and you pray just two rak'ah for Salat al shuruq you get the reward of an accepted Umrah. Why is the reward so high? Because most people, what do they do right after Fajr? They either go to sleep or they're getting prepared for the day. But if you took that time to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's something special for you. There's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that says, the one who, when upon entering the market to make say dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they make the dua of a suq, of the market, that Allah writes for them one million hasanat and takes away from them one million uh, sins and raises their level, uh, their darajat by one million points. Um, and the reason is because most people, when they go to the suq, are they remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, that's when they're heedless. And if you can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when most people or you have a tendency of being heedless, um, there's a special reward for you. That's one of the reasons why Rajab was so blessed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Because it's a time that most people, it gets overshadowed. It gets overshadowed by Rajab and it gets overshadowed by Ramadan. And here I want to make a quick side point, um, actually, about the idea of um, uh, when we pay attention to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when we pay special attention. Um, uh, to the world around us. Um, and I want us to take a tangent here and think about um, what dictates when we pray. And of course, the correct answer to this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us when the five daily prayers are. But what is the indication for us when the times for Fajr, for Dhuhr, for Asr, for Maghrib, and for Aisha, when do they come in? Then the answer is supposed to be actually it's the sun. When we start, see, start seeing the first light of, of dawn, we know it's Fajr time, and once the sun has risen, we know Fajr time has ended. Once the sun reaches its peak, and our shadows are shortest, that's the time for Dhuhr. Once we see that our shadows are about twice our length, or one and a half times our length, that's the time for Asr. Once we see that the sun has, is starting to set and has set, that's the time for Maghrib. And once we see that there's no trace of the sun's light at all, that's the time for Isha. And the reason I mention this is because Allah wants us to be aware of the state of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only thing you need to understand whether it's time for, for you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually just look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
I think this is a lost art that a lot of us should retake um, and, and understand again. I know most of us are relying on our cell phones or something to tell us uh, what time prayer is. But if we, there, we've lost something beautiful and that is supposed to be, look at the sunrise because the sunrise is going to make you do tasbih and then once you start seeing that light, then you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your experience of it is different. And especially for a lot of us who are cooped in our homes right now, um, one of the things that we should really focus on is um, try to just look outside and just go outside if you have the ability to. And I'm not telling anyone to like break curfew or anything like that, but look outside inshallah through a window or something and appreciate and do tasbih, make your salah as a response to the, the phases of the, of, of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sun. Um, and that'll, that'll quite literally change you um, in terms of how you do tasbih or how you glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and I think that's, that's a lost art, unfortunately, um, that we're supposed to look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're supposed to be affected by it. Um, uh, and we respond to it. So that's, that's one thing on the state of the sun. But if we even look at it on the other side, when do we fast? And we get into something interesting is uh, we follow a lunar, lunar calendar of when we fast, right? We're supposed to, everyone sees the moon when it's time for, uh, uh, time for Ramadan, right? And we have like uh, other people watch Star Wars, Muslims watch Moon Wars. Um, but this idea of like, when did Ramadan come in or when it didn't? But this idea of, no, we're supposed to even be looking at the other great creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in the sky. And that's the moon. And um, this is more of a tangent, but um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa his sunnah was to fast on the white days of the month, which is when the moon was in a full, when it was a full moon from the 13th, 14th, and 15th of the month. And why was that? Because it's this idea that he is paying attention to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala around him and responding appropriately. So it's an, a lost art, unfortunately, that you're supposed to look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will affect your iman. But that's one thing is most people don't pay attention to the month of Sha'ban. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, that's one of the reasons he pays attention to Sha'ban. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. وَهُوَ شَهْرٌ تُرْفَعُ فِيهِ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ It's the month in which your book of deeds are prepared uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or are given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأُحِبُّ أَنْ يُرْفَعُ عَمَلِي وَعَنَا صَائِمٌ And I love that when my books of deeds are raised up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I'm fasting. Why? Right? Because the Prophet ﷺ wants to be in a beautiful state when his book of deeds go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith that's connected to this is actually how to use, make use of the month of Rajab, this gift that we've been giving of, of the month of Rajab, is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, uh, Inna Allah la yattali'u fil laylati fil laylati nisfi min sha'ban that Allah in the month of Sha'ban looks down and he forgives the entirety of the creation except for two. He doesn't forgive the one who does shirk, the one who associates partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other one is the one who holds hatred or holds a grudge in their heart. And why that's important and why that's connected in terms of how to utilize Sha'ban is supposed to be that the middle of Sha'ban, it was already a month that was beloved to the Prophet ﷺ because he would fast in it because people neglect it. But one of the, the reason we got in the first hadith is Allah brings up the book of deeds. And in this hadith, the second narration that's found in the Sunan of uh, Ibn Majah, it's a Sahih, Sahih narration that the Prophet ﷺ says is Allah looks down on the entirety of creation and forgives everyone except for two groups of people. The one who did shirk, the one who, of course, wasn't even asking for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they didn't recognize Allah as Allah. And the other one is the one who had mushahinin, the one who holds a grudge. And that second one is what I want to focus on and what the crux of today's reminder is about. Is when we're talking about what we're supposed to be doing in Sha'ban, we're supposed to be purifying our heart. Let go of any grudges that you hold. Because there's a uh, um, narration um, that is found by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud عنه, who said in regards to tazkiyah or purification, more people will earn Jannah for the things that they didn't do rather than the things that they did. And that's a very profound statement on so many levels. But what that's supposed to mean is when you earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what every one of us is trying to do. You don't earn, in, according to this narration, you don't earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala necessarily for the actions you do. You earn it for the things that you didn't have in your heart, which was shirk 
and no grudges against people or no grudges on anything. And if we're talking about how do we prepare for uh, um, uh, Ramadan, how do we use Sha'ban appropriately is you actually empty your heart of all the negativities that exist within it. And what I mean by this is um, this will be related to stories like the companion who was promised Jannah. Um, and I know many of you have probably heard this narration, but it's a narration that was uh, found by Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As anhu, in which he was sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the companions in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What a blessed gathering that was. Um, he was just sitting there and a bunch of companions were sitting there with him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was reclining and he sits up and says, a man is about to enter who's a man from Jannah. And the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu of course, look over. Who is this man from Jannah? And a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu walks in. And they're all like, subhanAllah, that, the Prophet Sallallahu just guaranteed that man Jannah. And then the next day, something similar happens. Where the Prophet Sallallahu again is with this, a similar group of companions just sitting there. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, a man is about to enter who's a man from Jannah. And it's the same companion. And then the same thing happens the third day as well. And eventually one of the younger companions of the Prophet the one who narrates this hadith, he wants to figure out what is it that this guy does. Um, and in most narrations, this the man from Jannah, his name is not found. In one narration it says it's Sa'd ibn Abi Waqas. But he's like, what is it that this man does that earns him the title of a man from Jannah from the Prophet wasallam? And so he decides to follow him. He goes up to that man and says, he makes up a story. I got into a fight with my family and I need a place to stay. And of course, this man being one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu they were extremely hospitable. And he said, you can stay with me. And so he stays with him for three days. And Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As in these three days is looking at every move of this man, trying to figure out what is it that earned him the special title with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he starts thinking maybe during the day, all he does is he gives charity. And he follows it around the whole day. And he's like, I didn't see him do anything special. Then he's thinking maybe he always fasts every single day. And he sees him eating throughout the day. So he's like, he's obviously not fasting. Maybe at night he stays up all night in the Qiyam. He's praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the entire night. So he st stays up in the, at night watching if this man is praying. And he sees this man is just sleeping. And so the three days pass and he hasn't been able to find anything special about him. And then he goes up to the man and he says, um, I actually don't have any problems with my family. Uh, I actually just spent these three days with you because the Prophet Sallallahu told me that you were a person who, who was a person of Jannah. And I wanted to see what it was special that you do that earned you this title. And the companion looks over and, and tells him, what you have seen is how I normally live my life. These weren't exceptionally bad days or exceptionally good days. This is just my normal life. And then Saad ibn Abi, I mean, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As is kind of disappointed and he's turning away. But And then the companion who was promised Jannah looks over at him and says, but there is one thing. And that one thing is, before I go to sleep every night, I make sure that I review my entire day. And if anyone has wronged me, I make sure to forgive them. And Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As says, that's it, that's it. That's the reason you were probably promised um, Jannah. Because I want us to just think about, if someone doesn't hold a grudge, if you, want, if you can go through your entire day and you have no negative feelings toward anyone, you literally, this person wronged me, this person cut me off, this person didn't say salam to me properly, this person, whatever you want to add in there, you forgive everyone. I forgive them, I forgive them, I hold no grudges in, your heart, in my heart. Can you imagine how soundly we sleep? That's the position of this man. And that's what happens when you purify yourself of all of these other issues. Is um, in, in his case, he earned Jannah because of it. But if we look at the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that I, I, I uh, uh, mentioned second, the hadith in which the Prophet وسلم, said that in the middle of Ramadan, Allah, or in the middle of Sha'ban, Allah looks down on the creation and forgives everyone except for the one who uh, does shirk or holds a grudge. We want to be amongst those that earn that forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our books of deeds in five days, inshallah. The middle of Sha'ban is coming up. We're on the 10th day of Sha'ban already. As our book of deeds are being presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to make sure that we have no grudges in our hearts. And how do we do that? Um, that's honestly by seeking forgiveness from people. That if there are people who you've wronged or people that have wronged you, go and start repairing those relationships. Why? Maybe it's a family member. 
maybe it's a time to, alhamdulillah, we're getting a time to spend a lot more time with our families than we normally do. But honestly, go up to them. Have I ever done anything wrong um, that you wanted to like make right? It, please tell me what this is. This is our time to do that. And why is it our time to do that? Because think about it this way. If Ramadan is the month of the Quran, the month of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the man, a month where the love letter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to each and every one of us, which are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the Quran. If that's going to be the month that we connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can't be distracted by anything else. Our heart can't have anything else within it. And Oftentimes arguments or uh, ill feelings towards other people, they get in the way of us having a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can tell you as someone who um, has a background in, in, in cognitive behavioral therapy, um, that uh, grudges or when you have negative feelings towards something, they have real consequences for your mental health and even your physical health. When someone feels like they literally, like someone else is uh, the cause of all of their problems in their life, or they're angry at their children, or they're angry at their siblings, um, that actually starts affecting their physical health. They are not able to get through the day. Things that are supposed to make them happy don't make them happy. Things that are supposed to make them sad, things that are supposed to um, uh, uh, make them smile or feel things, there's a numbness that starts coming in because their heart is too full to feel the emotions that you're supposed to throughout the day. One of the ways that we actually prepare in the month of Shaban for the month of Ramadan is we empty our hearts of everything so that we can experience the blessings of the month of Ramadan. An analogy I like giving is it's kind of like if you're about to go on a vacation with your, your loved one, let's say it's your spouse, let's say it's your children, um, and you really want it to be quality time that you spend with them. One of the things you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take care of all other issues so that you can spend quality time with them. Rather than, let's just say you go to like a beautiful location or something, and you're just on your phone the entire time, taking care of some business. They'll say, you were there, but you weren't really there. You were there, but you, you were just there in, in, uh, in name. You weren't there in actuality. We don't want that to be our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And actually, there's a narration um, um, uh, uh, about this, that the Prophet sallallahu said that the book of deeds is presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's, there's many different narrations of it. One is it's, it's every day. So at Fajr time and right after Asr time. And that's why it's encouraged to do as God at that time. And there's another uh, narration that says the book of deeds is presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every Thursday. And it's actually quite interesting um, what, this, uh, um, uh, what this narration says is uh, as the book of deeds is going up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Mondays and Thursdays, as it's going up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at the person whose deeds are coming up. And for certain people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Undiru. Undiru hatta yastaliha. And it's said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at two people who are quarreling with each other or arguing with each other. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to those people, wait delay it and another nation qif or ruddu like send it back send back their deeds why because they're too busy they're too busy working on themselves rather than working on their relationship with me we don't want to be people who do that who let a grudge be the reason why we are um taken away from the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a grudge the reason why we can't experience ramadan how we really are supposed to be uh, uh, greeting ramadan we want this to be a month in which it's an un uh, unobstructed relationship between us and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to really work on that don't let grudges that you have with other people and sometimes there's also a grudge you have with yourself um what else this means is um sometimes you have a grudge with yourself and the idea could be you haven't forgiven yourself. No, use the month of Sha'ban to prepare yourself. If, if you haven't forgiven yourself for something, really think about it. what is it going to take for me to earn my own forgiveness? And oftentimes that means write it out or process the, uh, the, the issues that we're dealing with. Um, if it's a grudge with other people, talk to your family members, repair those relationships repair them so that we're going to be inshallah um uh qualified for the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um uh we will we're going to spend our nights in ramadan saying what allahumma inna kafun tuhibbul afwa fafu anni oh allah you love to forgive um uh, you are the most forgiving you love to forgive forgive us we're going to keep saying that we actually start that in the month of shaban by forgiving the people around us that we're prepared to receive the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by first forgiving all the people that, that uh, um, we have the ability of forgiving. Um, and of course, forgiveness is sometimes earned. So going up to the people who are around us who have wronged us and forgiving them and also earning the forgiveness from the people we have wronged as well. That's how we prepare for it. And the other two parts of the 
um, uh, parts of uh, preparation for Shaban, which are purely on a practical basis, right? Yes, we work on the state of our hearts. We purify our hearts to be ready. But the other thing is, think about it this way. Um, many of us, the first couple of days we start Ramadan, at least, uh, unfortunately, I've been through this many times, is the first like three or four days, you're like a zombie. <laughs> Why is that? Because like we're deprived of caffeine, we're deprived of sugar, our body hasn't gotten used to fasting just yet. But the person who uses Sha'ban, they get through those moments in Sha'ban. So that when they hit the month of Ramadan and their inner shayateen are locked up, their body is already ready to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we don't recite Quran until Ramadan. And unfortunately, many of us fall into that scenario where our recitation of Quran is very limited, except for in the month of Ramadan. That's when we finally get to recite the Quran. Um, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to call the month of Sha'ban the month of, month of the Qur'an or the month of um, those that recite the Qur'an. And the reason was because they would use Sha'ban to prepare for the recitation in Ramadan. You don't want to be rusty in the first few days of Ramadan. You want to be fluid in your recitation already when Ramadan gets there. So recite more Qur'an in, in these months to prepare yourself so that you can benefit from the entirety of the month of Ramadan, inshallah, in the month of Sha'ban. And the other things I'll say about that is, um, uh, some of us also, we have a higher standard of behavior for ourselves in the month of uh, uh, Ramadan than we have throughout the year. Maybe there's a sin that we're involved in that we don't do. Um, uh, whether that's smoking, whether that's overeating, whether whatever the sin is, is um, but we're, we try to be more cognizant in the month of Ramadan. And here's where um, we have to just appreciate for ourselves that one is we're missing out on so many blessings in Sha'ban when we do that. Because the month of Sha'ban is a month that your deeds are taken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's understood that your book of deeds is going to be different in the month of Ramadan. So they get taken up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Sha'ban. But the other thing to keep in mind is um, we should get rid of those things now so that we can uh, be prepared in the month of Ramadan rather than as soon as the first day of Ramadan comes, that becomes this major reformation of all of our actions. No, it should have been leading up to it. So that the effects of those sins that we have don't follow us into uh, Ramadan, that we were able to excise all of them in the month of Sha'ban so that our month of Ramadan is just between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so those are just a few uh, kind of um, reminders that I wanted to share uh, about the month of, of uh, Sha'ban and how to best utilize this blessed month that uh, Rasulullah sallam, told us so many blessings of our book of deeds are taken up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a month that many people neglect. So this is a time to really earn that rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most people are just saying Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan. And yes, we're saying we want to benefit from Ramadan as well, but it doesn't come at the expense of Sha'ban. The, the hadith of the Prophet sallam, or the sunnah of the Prophet sallam, the dua that he would make in Sha'ban is Allahumma barik lana fi Sha'ban. Actually, it, it even predates Allahumma barik la fi ratab wa shaban wa balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, accept from us during the month of Rajab and Shaban and allow us to live up to the month of Ramadan. Yes, we're 20 days away, but Allahu Alam, we don't know how long we have to live. What if we don't make it to Ramadan? Use this moment to prepare for that special moment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're going to experience in Ramadan. Use Sha'ban to empty your hearts of everything, all those grudges that we have, so that we're going to be, inshallah, deserving of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that that special time we have with Allah in Ramadan, we're not one of those people that just like rolled into it, but like we were preparing and anticipating it. Because how we treat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supposed to be Allah is our beloved. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this special time that Allah has for us, we want to make sure that we are completely ready for it. So in the next, um, today's the 10th of Shaban, the next 20 days, empty your heart of everything except for your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, it will be a Ramadan unlike any other. The Ramadan we're going into is going to be different from any of us than any Ramadan that we've ever experienced. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it so that our masajid open back up. But Allahu alam, we don't know what's going to happen and we're supposed to plan. And um, for many of us, it's going to be the first Ramadan that we went through without a community, without the idea of like these grand iftars in which we have dozens of people in and the tarawih that we pray with hundreds of our fellow believers. Um, that won't be the situation of a lot of us, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean that this Ramadan won't be meaningful. If anything, when you really think about it, the Ramadan we're about to experience will be closer to the Ramadan of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions. They didn't have massive iftar parties. Ramadan, um, some of the narrations we have of the Prophet ﷺ and his family, and most of the narrations we have about Ramadan are actually from the family of the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because it was a special time for the individual family of the Prophet ﷺ, the household of the Prophet ﷺ. Um, we're going to inshallah be experiencing that this year. So make sure to prepare for that and start having that conversation. Hey, what are we going to do every night? 
Are we going to do our own tarawih in our own house? Okay, who's going to share a reminder? Let's start preparing. Let's start getting ourselves to the point where we can recite ourselves. It's time to start preparing for that in this blessed month of Shaban. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the 15th night of this month um, looks down on the creation that we are amongst the people, that Allah says, forgive them. We're not amongst those people that because of the grudges that we held, that we're not qualified for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those that use the month of Sha'ban to better their Ramadan and don't use the month of Sha'ban as an excuse to do sins because they know they're going to be better in Ramadan. If anything, no, we use this to do good deeds so that we can do even better deeds in the month of Ramadan. I mean, Rabbah al-Amin, Jazakum Allah khairan, inshallah, I will, I, um, I am going to end with that. Um,